Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Dragonfly KK130 and this is going to be the first part of the review uh, as there is a lot to talk about this uh, drone um, yes it resembles a very known model on the market uh, and this one it's also sold very cheap so this should be really interesting to see how it copes against the original model and uh, that is the parrot anafi and if you take this out of the box you can see right away they look almost the same and they feature the same design and the same folding frame but they are not identical although they share similar specs which is interesting um, and the best of this cheap one is that it comes with a two axis gimbal camera just like the original one on the Parrot so that's pretty impressive for how cheap this uh, model is first thing I want to try is to, to see the weight of the Dragonfly so uh, it, it's with no battery installed right now and it has 211 grams uh, I don't know if you can see it maybe this is better all right while the original Anafi has 192 and that is including the lens cap and if I remove this right so 191 grams so this is a bit um, lighter than the clone model then uh, let's take a close look at the battery of the dragonfly uh, it has similar design but it all ends there um, as you can see they have reversed the holding pins so it has two clips here and this one two clips here and one with the one and they use another type of connector this is the original parrot one and this is the clone um, battery connector but the battery also has a smart chip inside it also charges uh, with the same USB type C and if you don't use it for several days it will start to self discharge to protect itself so they went that extra step which usually is not found in cheap Chinese drones right the clone battery has 138 grams while the original Anafi one 126 so the battery is also heavier but this is also rated of uh, having 3000 milliamps capacity while the uh, original one is rated for uh, uh, 2700 so the capacity should be slightly bigger on this and the battery uh, has roughly the same size you can see the lipo satchels there and it's nice that they have included these fans as it will allow the cells to cool and this battery might actually provide a bit better flight time than the original Anafi battery not only by having bigger capacity but it may also have bigger discharge rate which should improve things next thing to look at is the controller which I really like and it has folding antennas which you can also rotate and orient as you need to and they fold really nice and you can also untwist this uh, uh, joystick stick here and you can remove them and that makes it easier to uh, store this you see it has small screw there so you need to take that out and you can remove them and you can throw this into a backpack without breaking the uh, joysticks while this is not possible on the original parrot controller the sticks are from one single piece of plastic and if you throw this into a backpack you can break them so uh, I like this design better the controller is also uh, more compact than the parrot one and uh, it's also more advanced as when you unfold it it even has an LCD screen here and it has live telemetry and it will show you 
uh, various information such as the battery level of the drone, what the camera is doing, distance, the GPS signal and stuff like that so when you power this on and the drone is uh, turned on uh, all of them will uh, show the actual data from the drone which is not possible on this one if you don't use the app because it doesn't have any kind of screen or information but it has this neat function that it turns on when you unfold it this one has a power switch you need to use in the box you are going to find some extras so you get a strap with metal buckles and there are some papers and another plastic bag so that's all of it so we get a bag with various accessories let's take them out and see what you get inside right and we get spare propellers charging cable another cable and this one is for charging the controller or transmitter this one has micro usb and rechargeable battery built inside the quadcopter battery has usb type c so you get a cable for each of uh, the chargers and a small screwdriver and another pair of propellers and two more set of propellers so you get a complete set of propellers and a spare set of thumb uh, joysticks and a set of tiny screws as replacement and maybe you are going to lose some of them so really nice you have this set which you can change and they are different from the original one these are longer and not that sharper here they are smoother while these are um, really sharp and uh, thin and less wider than this one so you can change that uh, as you wish a really good idea all right so let's uh, turn this on to see if it works if it uh, has survived the trip from china uh, and I'm also going to insert my micro SD card for the camera and it has a slot here and what is uh, really interesting about this model you see it has a small camera here like the Anafi the Anafi has it here the Anafi has a sonar here this measures the height when uh, uh, it's an ultrasound sensor so if it loses GPS it doesn't measure air pressure it uses ultrasound and that will hold the altitude constant without any kind of other sensors well this one uh, doesn't have that sensor here but does have the camera this has a barometer that holds the uh, height constant and this is for optical flow so when GPS is lost it's the same as on the parrot there this one scans the image under the drone and when it drifts it corrects it and holds it in the same position even if it doesn't have GPS so this enables not only safer flights but you can also fly with this indoor without crashing it or being uh, taken by the air draft all around and crashing into stuff and now I'm going to connect the battery and it slides in makes that noise not really nice it sounds like it's going to break something and then I'm going to open the transmitter I'm going to power this on you short press and then hold a button pressed for a bit of time and it has started it's initializing and I'm also going to turn on the controller and it's connected and it already shows the status of the quadcopter so I have full signal from the transmitter to the quadcopter the uh, GPS mode is on uh, you have uh, a transmitter battery which is not full and uh, Eric is the quadcopter battery no actually it's reversed the uh, tra takes the X it's uh, drone and RX is uh, the 
controller here. I don't know why they did that. They could have uh, shown it other way. You have also height and distance shown here. And the buttons here you have this uh, one is to return to home. Uh, you need to press it uh, something like two seconds. From here you change the quadcopter speed. Uh, you have this short press. Uh, it's photo, long press, it's uh, video. Uh, here you have the gimbal tilt. This makes horrendous noise, by the way. You have enable or disable GPS mode, so you can fly indoor. Or if something goes wrong or you don't want to use GPS, you can disable it. You have automatic takeoff, automatic landing. Keeping this pressed for a few seconds, it's emergency stop and will drop uh, from air. Uh, then there is this one called master mode, which is not documented, but shows the transmitter something like that. Maybe it has a gravity mode or something, I don't know. And it has this one here, which is the old headless mode, and that's really confusing. It's good for beginners, but it's very confusing and not to be used. It's that when the quadcopter is facing you, uh, going... Uh, uh, left will be still left and right will be still right even though the quadcopter should operate in the reverse direction so when it goes normally like this left it's still left and right is still right that's the headless mode but it's not really useful and I'm also going to open the app I should have a, a wireless network from the quadcopter a new wireless network here so let me see. There it is. Swift GPS 2K, although this is the 4K version of the quadcopter. Never mind, I'm going to connect to it. And the app is called Swift GPS. And I'm going to click on Start here. And I already have Imi from the camera, so this thing is working. Let's see, uh, can I control the gimbal? Yes. But it's terrible. That noise, it's terrible. Alright, but uh, you can also control the gimbal from the app, which is much more better than... Uh, uh, controlling it from the controller there all right let's see what else we have here so you have automatic takeoff landing just like the controller you have options for recording taking photo and what else we have here flight records we have flight records interesting we have photo and video gallery we have this we have novice mode that you can enable disable you have return altitude fly height flight distance and you can adjust that just like on the nafi it shows battery level and i don't know that seems to be it what else can we do we have a more option here so we have this guide shows the all the options but not a lot of functions uh, we should have a calibration options or something and if you press this on more you have lens reversal uh, this is upside down for the camera one click away GPS follow so you have follow you have waypoints you have circuit flight you have VR gesture mode filter zoom and music so it even has a kind of built-in video editor uh, I think that they overdid themselves with uh, this app uh, but nonetheless I would have loved to see a compass calibration or something which I don't see for now and it's sometimes good to read the manual so the gyro calibration and uh, um, also compass calibrations are done from the controller itself you use stick combination both sticks 
down and left for the gyro and for the compass both uh, down and right and then you need to rotate it in a horizontal way and then with the camera facing up rotate it again around its axis and that's how you calibrate this you should do this is very important but uh, the magnetic calibration should be down uh, done outside outdoor away from anything metal uh, away from cars away from uh, uh, armed concrete buildings and stuff like that never do it indoor as it will mess the compass and you can have a potential fly away with the drone because of that all right so that was it for now um, I cannot fly this at the moment because there is a blizzard outside, lots of snow, uh, 100 km per hour wind gust or 70 or something like that. So I'm going to have to wait for the weather to settle around a bit and then I'm going to test fly it and get some camera footage. Hopefully it will be at least decent but we are going to see how it performs when that is done so be sure to follow my next uploads and as soon as possible i'm going to uh, upload the second part until then see you and bye bye